In this module, we will learn how to run regressions on Microsoft Excel. While Microsoft Excel is not the most powerful tool to run regressions, however, it is very convenient and easy to use. All the basic functions of regression, such as getting an estimate of the coefficients and the R square, can easily be done on Excel. However, more advanced functionalities, such as getting an estimate of the heteroscedasticity or autocorrelation, cannot be done on Excel automatically. Hence, Excel, even though limited, is a useful tool to run regressions. We will cover three topics. First, activating the data analysis tool pack. Second, running the regression. And third, analyzing the results. So let us begin. Let us say that our objective is to run a regression for data from France from the 1970s. What we want to do is to use the change in per capita income in France since the 1970s as a function of the per capita level of income in the previous year of the savings rate, the population growth rate, the change in savings rate and the change in the population growth rate. Before we actually run the regression, we need to activate the data analysis tool pack that Excel has. To do that, go to the office button, go to Excel options and click on add-ins. Out here on my computer analysis tool pack is already activated but assume you need to activate something else say the solver add-in you will go to that uh, click on the go button down here and select solver add-in and analysis tool pack as i've already done click on ok excel would now run a bunch of installations and after they're done out here in the data tab you would see to the extreme right data analysis and the solver add-in would have been installed data analysis pack will help you do a number of statistical studies such as uh, correlation, covariance, uh, the f-test, uh, moving averages, random number generation, regressions, sampling, etc. In our uh, module here we will deal only with the regression component of the data analysis tool pack. After installation of the data analysis tool pack, to run the regression go to the data tab, click on data analysis select regression, click on OK and here you are ready to run regression on MS Excel. First you have to input the Y range that is the dependent variable. Click on this button here and select the entire Y range. In our example we need to select the delta of log Y as our Y range. So select all the data points that you have here. Next input the X range that is all the independent variables. In our case the other five columns are all independent variables and hence click on this button and select all the five columns. Do note that in the case of using MS Excel to run regressions all the independent variables should be adjacent to each other. If you have labels on your data you could check labels However, since we have not selected the labels, we don't need to check this. Second, if the constant is zero, that is if you want to run a regression through the origin, you will check this box. However, running regressions through the origin comes with its own set of problems and hence we will not want to do this. Thirdly, you could select the confidence level. This will give you the range between which the betas will lie. The default value for the confidence level by Excel is taken to be 95%. But suppose I want to take a higher confidence level, say 99% confidence level, then I can select this and tick mark on the confidence level. The output options is used to determine where the output would show and what all features and what all data do we want in the output. By default, Excel chooses the new worksheet as the output, in which case the output is displayed in a new worksheet. You could also select new workbook in which case you want it on the new workbook and an output range in which case you want it on the same sheet in a certain number of cells. Secondly, we talk about the residuals is that which form do you want the residuals in? You could tick on residuals if you want the absolute value of the residuals. You could tick on standardized residuals if you want the residuals to be standardized. You could tick mark on the residual plots if you want the residuals to show up graphically and similarly also a line fit plot. Uh, also that normal probability plots can also be displayed uh, for 
this data which will tell you whether the data we were talking about was actually fit for running a regression and whether the normality assumption was right. So after se selecting whatever options you want you have to click on OK and since we had selected the new worksheet as the option uh, our output shows up in a new worksheet and you have all the graphs that you had asked for. Now we will learn how to interpret the results that the regression generates. Firstly we have this box which is called the regression statistics. Out here we have a number of statistics that captures the overall goodness of fit of the regression. Firstly the multiple R is the correlation between the Y variable and the X variables. More importantly for a regression the R square value is displayed here which is the overall goodness of fit for the regression that is the percentage of deviation in the y which is explained by the, all the x's. In our example the r square value comes out to be 0 0.37. Whether this is significant enough or not we will talk later. The adjusted r square value adjusts the r square value for the number of x variables. As you would remember the more x variables we have the r square value will only go up. However, this comes at a cost and that's why we talk about the adjusted R square value. The standard error is the standard error of this regression that is the standard deviation of the y's from the expected y's. Observations gives us the number of observations in this case we talk about data from 34 years. The analysis of variance or the ANOVA table gives us the following information. Firstly, it gives us the degrees of freedom for the model which here is represented by regression for the residuals and for the total. The degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares is equal to the number of observations n minus 1 which in our case is 33. The degrees of freedom for the model sum of squares is k that is the number of independent variables in which case this is 5. The residual sum of squares or the RSS has a degrees of freedom which is equal to total sum of squares degrees of freedom minus the model sum of squares degrees of freedom that is 33 minus 5 equals to 28. The second column gives us the sum of squares uh, which in case of residuals for example is the sum of squares of the difference between the y i's and the predicted y i's. Similarly we have a model sum of squares and the total sum of squares. The mean square is equal to the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. The f ratio is the mean square of the model divided by the mean square of the residuals. In our case it is 0 0.028 divided by 0 0.008 giving us an f value of 3.299. The significance f gives us the significance of the f value we have just obtained. In our case it is 0 0.018. To test the significance of this f value of 3.29 we can refer to a f distribution table with the degrees of freedom as 5 in the numerator and 28 in the denominator. From the table we obtain a value of 2.06 which is less than the f test value that we have obtained here. Hence we will say that the f value is significantly different from 0 or that the r square value is significant. We can also obtain the significance of f by another method. The ANOVA table in its last column notes the significance f which in our case is 0 0.018 which is less than 5%, 10% or 2%. Hence we can say that this regression is statistically significant at the 10%, 5% and 2% level of significance. However since it is greater than 1% we cannot say the same about the 1% level of significance. Now we go to the final table here which is the information about the individual coefficients or betas. In the leftmost column we have all the independent variables and the intercept. In the second column we have the value of the coefficients. For example the value of the intercept in our regression comes out to be minus 0 0.02. The value of the intercept beta 1 for the variable x1 comes to be 0 0.06. The value of beta 2 for the variable x2 comes out to be 0 0.27 and so on. In the third column we have the standard error which is the standard error of each of these betas. The fourth column gives us the t stat which is the coefficient divided by the standard error. This gives us an idea of how 
consistent is the coefficient going to be in repeated sampling. The p-value gives us the level of significance of this coefficient. So for example, if we talk about the x variable 4, it has a p-value of 0 0.06, which is greater than 5% and hence we would say that this coefficient beta 4 is not significant at the 5% level of significance. Let's talk about a coefficient which is significant at the 5% level of significance and we can see that x variable 5 which has a p-value of 0 0.0349 is significant at the 5% level of significance. Hence what this column p-value tells us is which of these individual betas is significant. Going back to our original data we see that the variable 5 was delta of log n which is the change in population growth rate. Hence we would say that the change in population growth rate has an effect on the change in per capita income of a country. Lastly we have the confidence intervals for these given betas. These two columns tell us the lower 95% and the upper 95% confidence intervals. Uh, so for example for x variable 3 you see that this confidence interval ranges from minus 0 0.005 to plus 0 0.330. The coefficient obviously is going to lie right in the middle of this confidence interval. Earlier we had chosen our confidence interval as 99% and hence to the right of the 95% interval which is the default you see the 99% interval which is going to be a broader interval since we want greater certainty about the range in which this coefficient might lie. Hence you will see that the x3 variable coefficient uh, confidence interval which was earlier from 0.005 to 0.330 has now gone to minus 0.064 to 0.338. Hence if we choose a higher confidence level we will also get a bigger confidence interval. Finally, we have information on the residuals out here. To the bottom of the table, we have the residuals which is an observations, the predicted yi's, the value of the residual and the standardized value of the residuals. We have a number of other values for residuals such as the percentiles, the yi's, then as we had selected before, the residual plot and other such measurements. Most importantly, the absolute value of the residuals are used to carry out tests on heteroscedasticity, autocorrelation, etc., which Excel as a software does not do on its own for us. So the most important thing to note about residuals is actually the table of the absolute value of residuals that we have here. This predicted wise and the residuals can be used to calculate different test statistics for heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation and hence is useful. This broadly summarizes for us what Excel can do as a software as far as regression is concerned.